What is going on YouTube? We are back in the kitchen and we are cooking up something sweet today. Hopefully it turns out well. Um, because of what it is, it is spicy bacon bourbon peanut brittle. I forget which way it goes, but all of those things are in there. Um, we got a few things uh, laid out as far as what we're going to be using. I have all of my ingredients already measured out and uh, ready to go. Um, but for cooking purposes, what we're going to be using is a small pan to roast the peanuts. We have a larger uh, deep pan that we're going to be using to make the actual candy in. Um, I've got this pan where I'm just going to be frying up the bacon. I'm going to be par cooking it actually. And then I have uh, two cookie sheets over here. So I have one that is foil lined and that's going to be for the bacon as well. And then one that is not and that's going to be for cooling the candy itself. The thing we're going to get doing is cooking the bacon. So we need to get this thing cranking over here. Um, recipe for all this will be in the bottom. Um, but uh, obviously as we go along, you'll be able to tell what, what we're using here. Um, I think this one, my recipe calls for like five to seven pieces of bacon, depending on how big of a batch you're making. This, or how much bacon you really want. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I pulled out six. We're going to use six. There's no real science to it. It's just use whatever you want. Put more in if you like more bacon. Put less in if you like less bacon. Put none in. Doesn't really matter. But this is how I do it. Alright, so we're going to get this par cooked. It doesn't need to be uh, fully cooked. But I like to do this because it will get rid of a lot of the grease. So we're going to have to bake the... Uh, the bacon as well. We're going to cover it with uh, brown sugar and we're going to candy it so that it's uh, a little, it's got like a little hard crack on the top. It's going to be kind of gooey uh, underneath. And uh, yeah, uh, as for bacon, this particular bacon is applewood smoked. I can't really tell a difference once it's all mixed in there if you use a smoked one or if you use a non smoked one, what kind of smoke doesn't really matter. I just grab usually whatever is thick cut and on sale. So while that's going, we're going to get our peanuts going as well. So I'm going to kick this on and uh, I'm just going to dump this in here. This is one and a half cups of peanuts. Uh, these are just dry roasted, nothing special about them. They're uh, Fisher peanuts, they were on sale, that's what I got. Now you gotta watch the peanuts. Uh, they will burn rather easy and you don't want them. A, a little char on there isn't bad, but you don't want them uh, burnt. Um, you don't want that burnt taste in there at all, really on anything. So these bacon are just gonna go for a few minutes on each side. I have the uh, oven already on. It's already preheated, 375. 400, 450, really whatever you want. It's not that big a deal. Um, just make sure it's preheated. Um, this is actually kind of a crucial thing. Uh, the bacon has to be done before, or at least close to done before you get started with the candy uh, process because the candy process takes so little time. Uh, you can burn the candy the, the caramelized sugar you can burn it very easily and it once it's ready to come off the heat it's ready to come off so you need to get it off and it needs to start cooling right away so if your bacon isn't done you can't mix it in and stuff so I always mix this in ahead of time at 275 degrees or so um, I also had the peanuts in at that time we're gonna do it a little different here I'm actually gonna make part of the batch without any peanuts um, special request from my mom so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the peanuts on the side. You can see there's some little bit of char starting on these. Not a big deal. We like to see that. Get the uh, oils coming out of the peanuts. I, I like doing this. It, the little roasted flavor I think is better uh, than just taking them out of the, the jar anyway. They're just mildly warmed up. They have a little bit of color on them. I think they're good. We're just gonna set this aside. We're going to start adding our ingredients to the main pan here. 
which I'm gonna turn back on. And you're gonna do this over like a low medium heat and get everything melted and slowly bring the heat up. You definitely don't wanna rush this process. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna start with is my sugars. So I have one cup of just plain white sugar. Again, this makes it a lot easier if you do measure everything out ahead of time. Uh, just makes the whole process faster. I have one cup of brown sugar. Three quarters cup of corn syrup. And once you get some heat going in this, you're, you're definitely going to want to get stirring um, because it will not look like it's melting on the top, but on the bottom it will already be melting the sugars. So you just want to be careful with that. Again, we don't want to burn anything, we just want to kind of heat it up slowly. So stirring and stirring often with this is a good, good idea. This bacon is... Uh, getting there. I like it to get a little bit crispier. Also you don't want to get all this grease inside the candy. That's No one's going to want that. And you want the fat cooked through completely because you don't want chewiness. You don't want to uh, be chomping on some chewy bacon fat in the middle of some you know crunchy candy so uh, definitely make sure your bacon's cooked through and through before uh, doing anything else with it so you can see that's the uh, corn syrup that's starting to boil there where the regular sugar is uh, still all very granular I like to get this stuff all incorporated and mixed down first and then start adding all the other ingredients. You could probably add it all at the same time. This is just how I've done it. One very, very important piece of this process is a candy thermometer. So I have two different types. Um, this one is actually for a bunch of different things. It goes to 400 degrees. So um, that's like past deep frying temperature. But it goes as low as 100, which is chocolate melting, it says. But uh, I do have this other kind. It's a little glass filled one. Or glass, it's not glass filled, but it's a glass tube and it has a little thermometer on it. You can move this guy. A little thermometer and it has a little thing on the back telling you reference guide. Both work. Just find one that works best for you. Okay, so now with this we're going to add a half a stick of butter. Alright, so we're going to take our brown sugar and we're going to sprinkle it right onto our bacon and kind of form a little crusty layer. And that will melt down in the oven and create a candied effect. Uh, next thing I'm going to be doing is add in uh, the bourbon so it can cook down some. I have a uh, recipe calls for like three to five ounces. I have four ounces here. Um, you want to make sure to do this off of the heat or at least away from your heat because it will do that. It will start boiling. And if it starts popping, the even just the aroma of the bourbon can ignite and then you're going to basically flambe the sauce. So you want to pour it in and kind of get it incorporated. 
then you can put it back on the heat and it all cooks down. And you do want it boiling because you want to cook off the alcohol. You're just looking for the flavor of the bourbon to be incorporated into the sugar. Um, next thing I'm going to add in is three quarters cup of water. I just have it at room temp right now. I forgot what the water does, but it does something with the sugar and hydration. I'm not really sure. I'm not a candy expert. But every time you add something as well, it will uh, cool the whole mixture down. So you're going to have this wave effect of it climbing and uh, receding. You know, it's going to go up and down. So while that cooks, I can show you what I did here. Is I uh, took my crushed red pepper flakes and I actually put them in this uh, pestle and mortar, and I I tried to make it more powdery. Um, what I did notice is sometimes you'll get a flake and it's overpowering because you got a small piece of brittle and you'll have a big flake in there and it'll make you lose your breath uh, sometimes. So I try to make it as powdered as possible so that when it spreads out it'll be uh, a little finer and not as aggressive. I'm actually going to turn the broiler on now that it's uh, been up to temp and everything's starting to melt. I'm going to turn the broiler on to really try to candy the uh, sugar there. And this is slowly climbing. We're just above 175 right now. If I see that this is climbing too much uh, in comparison to how the bacon is cooking, I will turn it down. So we're right about 200 degrees. The bacon looks like it is candied pretty much. I'm gonna clear it and turn it off. I'm gonna pull it out and let it cool. That's gonna be a main factor there is letting it cool down. So you don't wanna burn it. You can see it's kinda smoking. That's the sugar in there. Um, the edges are starting to burn a little bit. It's gonna be just fine. You won't even know. So this is at 200 degrees. I'm just going to keep it going at that pace, slowly creeping up to that 300 degree mark. We want to be about uh, 300, 315, somewhere in there. This has hard crack at 300, 305, somewhere about there. Um, so what I like to do for the rest of this process is slowly bring it up and then about 275, I mix in the peanuts, the bacon, and the crushed red pepper and the almond extract, which I have three teaspoons. Three teaspoons of almond extract and then the last thing we do is add a teaspoon of baking soda and that's kind of what makes it, uh, I don't know, it kind of comes together, has some sort of chemical reaction in the, with the sugar, um, makes it brittle, I guess, I don't know. So, as we can see, you got the like candied top of the brown sugar on there. The bacon is cooked through. Um, you can see it is a little burnt here, but that's the sugar. That's not actually the uh, the bacon that's burnt. So I'm not super worried about it. I'm gonna try to get some of the sugar, the nice looking sugar, off of this tray and put it into the uh, mixture if possible. It's doing good. We're about 220 degrees see how beautiful this looks all these bubbles it looks so light and fluffy and it just coats the spoon it just runs right off everything's nice and well incorporated you can't tell if it's uh, you know one thing or another as far as what's in here it just looks really nice and light tan here you don't want it to be super super dark it's gonna get darker than this as it cooks, it's closer to hard crack, but uh, this is what you want. You want this slow progress. 
I just turned the heat up a little bit. Um, once we get closer to that 275, you know, we're going to add the stuff in, but what we're also going to do is it's going to bring the temperature down because we're adding stuff that's room temp um, back into this boiling mixture. So it's, it's going to bring it down and we're going to have to bring it right back up. So now I'm going to chop this bacon up into little pieces. You can see it's very hard at this point. And you want to chop it up really fine. Um, the brittle tends to break apart and get into small pieces. So you just don't want these like massive lumps of bacon. Although it sounds good and delicious, it, uh, it's better off just to have it kind of sprinkled throughout. So I'm not quite positive how I'm going to do this whole process with partial peanuts. Um, it has to go in at the end. Uh, so I I think what I'm going to do is pour, just pour some out, and then I'll have to go back onto the heat a little bit and uh, put the peanuts in, stir it up, and then pour the rest in. Um, in fact, I think I might make like an aluminum foil wall so that it separates the two so it doesn't just spread across the whole pan. And if it doesn't, they're just going to run into each other and we'll just have to break it apart where the peanuts are. We're getting there about 245 degrees and we can see the color is changing. It was a much lighter yellow and now it's getting more of a caramel color as it uh, gets higher up into that boiling point. It smells so good with the sugar and the bourbon. You can smell it, but you're not going to taste it a ton. If you made two batches side by side, you would probably be able to tell the difference between them. Um, but uh, also, I'm not a candy person, so I don't know if it's real or not. I just know that that's what I put in there. It definitely smells like bourbon. We're at 250 degrees, I'm going to put the... Uh, crushed red pepper in now, which is like one and a half tablespoon or teaspoons. Let that cook in and incorporate some. It is the let, let it best uh, cook in there some because you don't just want it raw. I mean, not that this is going to cook it a bunch, but putting some heat in it um, definitely should help open it up. Also, you can incorporate it better. You can see it kind of changed the uh, texture of the sugar. It's, it's less fluffy now. It's a lot more thick uh, than it was before. You can see it. It's just not as runny as it was. And that's the temperature and because we added the, uh, the ingredient there and it's having a reaction of some sort. Uh, one thing to mention is this recipe calls for honey. I ran out of honey. Um, I usually use a third cup of honey in here. I don't know if it makes a difference. Um, I used it last time. It was fine. I'll be able to find out if it isn't fine this time. Uh, but I, I don't think it makes a big difference. It's just uh, one of the things I normally add in there and just I ran out last time and I forgot when I was at the store today. So we're about 275 or just under it. I'm going to add the uh, vanilla in. Now you want to be careful with that as well just like the um, bourbon. It has alcohol in it that needs to be cooked off. Um, just because that's what it is. So uh, just add it in, just be careful and mindful. It's gonna boil. It is such a small amount. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't matter, unlike the 
bourbon you're because you're adding you know three to five ounces it's uh it's gonna it, it can flare up quite a bit and the the almond extract or almond vanilla extract doesn't have as much um that alcohol vapor to it so it's not as uh not as bad, you don't have to be as cautious, but you just wanna be aware that it's gonna boil up, you know, it's at boil temperature. And again, adding that, again, change the color and the kind of the structure of this stuff. It's getting thicker and thicker now. It's, it's really coating the spoon. And it's, not, it's not running off as nicely as it was before it was kind of, you know, sugar water. This is what we want. We want it to be thick so that it uh, gets to that hard crack point and uh, we get candy. Now if you go past it, you know, you're in that 315 to 330 range, somewhere in there, it's, it's gonna be like burning. Um, it's not gonna taste good, and it's not going to be what you would expect um, as far as candy. It just, it gets really brittle and really dark in color, and it just, it isn't good. Burnt sugar is not a good thing. So again, once we hit that about that uh, 300 mark or so, we're going to uh, add the te teaspoon of baking powder. It's going to completely change. It's going to have a big chemical reaction. I'm going to pour some out and then really quick put it back on the heat, add the peanuts, and then pour it back out. Uh, in fact, we're because we're at that point and we're going to have a lot going on at that point. Normally, I would add all that stuff right at the end. I'm going to put the bacon in now and get it incorporated. So I'm changing my process slightly. It shouldn't, I don't think it should have a negative effect, um, but I guess we'll see. We're just going to be scrambling a lot in the last you know, minute or so, trying to get this all together. Okay, and as you can see, once again, the color and the thickness has changed um, because of the bacon. It, it, it has gotten even darker now, and it's gotten thicker. You can see it's plopping off of the spatula now. It's not, uh, it's not running off like it was before. And we're at the 300 mark, so I'm gonna pull this off, turn my heat off real quick, and get the baking powder in, baking soda, and you can see it'll ha immediately have a reaction. It starts turning this creamy color aside. You gotta work fast with this stuff. Okay, it's all incorporated, looks good, still really hot. You wanna make sure that baking soda, there's no chunks of it because you don't wanna be eating raw baking soda, it's gross. So I'm gonna pour some out here, like so, oh shoot. I didn't realize that was lopsided like that. Pour some out here. And then I'm gonna put my peanuts in. Now this is a full batch of peanuts. That is hot. There's a full batch of peanuts inside of uh, half a batch of baking powder, of peanut brittle. Sorry, I'm clustered. My GoPro keeps turning off because it's too hot. So I'm gonna stir in the peanuts. It is thickening up rather quickly. So that is now incorporated. Oh, it is super heavy. Get it on the pan. You don't really want to pile it up. You kind of want to spread it out so it can cool and be even. Okay. That's, uh, that's about it. It is now ready to set. It is uh, got to go in the fridge. I mean, you can leave it on a counter or something like that. It'll be just fine. I stick mine in the refrigerator. It cools a lot faster, and then you can enjoy it faster. So I'm going to throw this in there now. 
It'll take a while to cool. Maybe, uh, I usually let it set for about an hour before I jump back into it, but uh, that's about it. So there's, there's really nothing left other than to enjoy. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you picked up some tips uh, on doing your own peanut brittle. It's not very hard. The biggest thing is that last couple minutes is very crucial watching that because it, it rises. Once it gets above like 280, it starts climbing fast for some reason. I don't know what the scientific term is on that, but it starts escalating quickly and you don't want to let it get out of control. You, you can see how quickly you had to kind of work. Um, it stays pretty hot, but the workable temperature in it, it needs to be up, you know, in that 275 plus range and it cools down to below 250 pretty quick, which is still really hot to the touch, but, uh, it's, uh, very important to keep it going. So I guess that's it. We'll end it off right there. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit the like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, you know all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.